This is Twit. Okay. Sonar scoop. Uh, Snoop. Uh, Snoop. Oh, Snoop. Yeah. You, See, you, why do I do uh, Yeah, you and I both did that. No, yes. I totally did it before the show. And I was, what is a sooner? <laughs> I think it, it corrected to sooner scoop, which for the Sooners, uh, it, was so, a, it was a sports site. And I was like, I just, yes. th for the Oklahoma Sooners football team. And I was like, this is not right. <laughs> so I'll tell you, this is the this is the best time of year for the podcast because we've got the Use Knicks conference and we've got Black Hat and DEF CON. I mean, it is right. just security conference heaven. Uh, so this is another piece of research that was shown at the three weeks ago now Baltimore Use Knicks security conference. Um, in the show notes, I have a picture from their research PDF, which they published as part of the, uh, the conference proceedings. It shows the back of a Samsung Galaxy S4 with the microphone that you would, uh, with the microphone at the top of the phone and the speaker on the back. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the microphone at the bottom that you normally talk to and, the, and a speaker at the bottom. And then on the on the other picture is a is a top located microphone and a top located speaker. So the top one is where your ear normally is, and you, obviously the bottom microphone is where your mouth normally is. But for to to increase noise cancellation uh, and the 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 utility of the phone, they put both the microphone and a speaker also on the opposite ends. So you've got a top microphone, a top speaker a bottom microphone, and a bottom speaker. Well, the next page of the show notes, I show their simplified diagram of what that means. That means you can ping from the top speaker a ultrasonic sound that the user will not hear, which will be received after some length of time based on how far away the person is and the, the rate at which sound travels will be heard by the upper microphone. Similarly, you can ping from the bottom speaker and it will bounce off the underside of the user's finger and back into the bottom microphone. In other words, classic sonar. And now... To triangulate, you really would want the sensors to be mounted on adjacent corners of the area. That way, if you get you you if you take the two distances, you know, so so they're on. It's called triangulate because there the the two sensors lie on one edge of a triangle, and then the distance that they're each sensing. Uh, informs it of the this the length of the other two lengths of the triangle, allowing it to uniquely determine the apex of the triangle not containing the sensors, thus triangulation. We don't have that here. We've got, you know, kind of arbitrarily located sensors. So it's less than ideal, but their research demonstrates that they are able to, to 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 not perfectly but to significantly determine the instantaneous position of a user's finger which is in contact with the screen so for, so, so reading from their abstract at the top of their research they said we report the first active acoustic side channel attack speakers are used to emit human inaudible acoustic signals, you know, like bats, and the echo is recorded via microphones, turning the acoustic system into a smartphone sonar system. The echo signal can be used to profile user interaction with the device. For example, a victim's finger movements can be inferred to steal Android unlock patterns. In our empirical study, the number of candidate unlock patterns that an attacker must try to authenticate herself to a Samsung S4 phone 
can be reduced by up to 70% using this novel acoustic side channel. So, no, not reduced to zero, but, you know, it's reduced by more than half. The attack is entirely unnoticeable to victims. Our approach, they write, can be easily applied to other application scenarios and device types. Overall, our work highlights a new family of security threats. So in terms of details, they, they used a dictionary of 12 unlock patterns. Okay, so not the, not the universe of possible unlock patterns. They just, you know, they were looking for, does this kind of work at all? So they, they used a dictionary of 12 unlock patterns in their tests, which contained 15 unique strokes. The data collected from 12 volunteers uh, was fed into, a, in, in, into an AI learning machine model for classification of each stroke. And as expected, the classification accuracy was significantly higher when input, simultaneous input from both micros, microscopes was con, microphones was considered. The researchers reduced the average number of correct candidates from the 12 unlock patterns to 3.6. That's average. In some instances, the analysis eliminated all guesses and revealed the single correct pattern uniquely. Um, I looked at the research, and I won't go into any more detail here because everybody gets it. Um, but the, the, I have a strong gut sense that we're going to see this evolve. Um, this, um, it's, it uses sensors available in our devices. It could certainly be used for benign purpose, like, you know, moving your hand around in front of an app in order to do something and having the app respond. It's not super high fidelity. Again, the sensors are not located exactly where you want them. Was it the Apple? I mean, it was a, the Amazon phone. They had like some funky sensor in each corner of the screen for a while, didn't they, Jason? And they, yeah, and that, and that was meant to kind of change the parallax of, of what you were looking at. It was, it was meant to kind of like, I don't know, from the four points, be able to, to know determine where, your perspective where, and shift accordingly. To, so like to, to, to see your face so that they could change the screen in order to make it look more depthy. It was a lot of hardware for a very minimal application <laughs> <Okay>. purpose. <Yeah. laughs> but yeah. no, what this reminds me of is, if you remember, I think it was like three or four years ago at Google I.O., Google had shown off something called Project Soli, which was also... Oh my Yes, 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 and I am so jazzed by that. Where you like, yep. you do like, you know, like like push buttons and and turn knobs and things. Oh, yep. I really want to see that happen. I haven't really heard much about it since then, and I think their their idea was that it would possibly be integrated into like wearables, like uh, smartwatches of some sort, so that you wouldn't have to touch it, but you could still do the controls. And then there's yes, also something else uh, that I read about called what was it? It was called Finger IO, which there's a demonstration. Yes. And that that's that seems a little bit more in line with what Sonar Snoop is all about. Yeah, and um, uh, uh, Soli was uh, EM radiation, so right. it was it it's was different. it was very low level electromagnetic radiation that, that gave it extremely high resolution in return for having to have a lot of processing behind it. But right. but anyway, this is I thought this was very cool, very clever, something no one had thought of before, and. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this uh, evolving in the future. This feels like something that uh, could be taken from this initial research out to its next level. So uh, mm -hmm. props to these guys and a nice piece of research. Yeah. No matter what you call it. No matter what you call it. I'm Scoop curious on a, on a device specific perspective because like you were saying, you know, every, every phone has a microphone and a speaker in a different location. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, for this to work on a broad spectrum of Android devices, like I imagine those locations diff like create different hurdles as far or different requirements for where exactly on the screen your finger is at any given moment. If the speakers and microphones are over here versus over there, does that then narrow down, you know, the accuracy differently? Well, and, and so, for devices? example, one, one thing that's if somebody wanted to be clever, 
they could create a game which which you know inherently requires you to move your finger around and touch different areas of the screen oh to learn while yes yeah. while you're playing the game it's doing sonar on you and you don't know it's calibrating to, yes yep that's that yep. Dang it. That's that's too wise. That's too smart. And you know what? That'll probably happen. Uh, but this only really from a security standpoint, it seems like this really only works if you're doing like a, a swipe pattern. Right. Would it would it be would there be any indication that it would work with like tapping in a pin or something along? Those and that, lines? and then see that that's exactly what I mean when I say this feels like first gen. Yeah. And so, you know, they demonstrated the concept is viable. <laughs> and so. I wouldn't be surprised if before long they could turn this into read, you know, read keystrokes on a keyboard. Totally. Well, that's another thing that's kind of reminded me of the, the whole thread from years ago about uh, people being able to listen to someone typing on a keyboard uh, and being able to reconstruct what they're typing based on the sound yeah. of those keys clacking. Yeah, that's just bizarre, but yeah. it's true. Yeah. Yep. Oh, this stuff is crazy.